count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Try, riches. Try, and told, try and told him I'm a beast, blood. What's up, gang? Welcome to the Grindcast. Simon Arias here. Get ready. It's a new day. What's up, gang? Welcome to another episode of the Grindcast. Get ready. It's a new day. And I'm I'm straight off the plane. Right now. Big Perm came and scooped me up. Yes, sir. What's up, buddy? Right from uh West Palm. Yeah. West Palm Beach. <laughs> and so the first half of the trip was uh, a John Maxwell uh conference, leadership conference. And there's I don't know, maybe a hundred people that were there, big business, you know, folks from all over the world. So they were invited to do this thing. Only a hundred a hundred people were? Yep. Yeah, about 100. 100. I'd say I didn't count count them by head, but that's what it wow. looked like to me wow. when I started to look. Probably about 100 people or so. And uh, it was in West Palm Beach. And we ended up being able to go to John Maxwell's house what? personally. So anybody that knows me in business, if they're in leadership, anybody that asks me what book they should read, I always tell them. I, already, I start everybody off with, with John Maxwell. Oh, that Maxwell. was the first real book that I ever read, uh, high school, college, I hustled my way through. Yeah. First book I ever read was, was John Maxwell, 21, John Maxwell, 21 Laws of Leadership. I've been on his stuff for, you know, for years, and I got to meet him for the first time last year and hang, and hang with him. And when, and where was that at? Where'd that you go was that? in London. In London? Last year. Yeah. That's and, sweet, uh, man. You know, I was plugged in. Coach Trestle brought yeah. me with yeah. him. That was the first one that, that introduced me because Coach uh, – was friends with them. Mm -hmm. Maxwell had spoke at, at uh, some of the Ohio State Michigan games, I think, and then even in uh, a couple of Maxwell's books, he's referred to uh, Trestle. So they're they're like friends, you know. They're both from Ohio. So he hooked me up, you know, and and uh, without that door opening, you know, I don't, I definitely would have never done it, and I definitely would have never had the relationship to where the the man. I can't even believe. It. I don't know how he does it at seventy two years old because he got so many people that he's working with and that are pulling on him. Mm. But he knew me by my first name. Simon. Mind blowing. You know what I mean? I never, in a, never would I ever think that this person that I've read their books, I listen to all their stuff would even say my name and not need a notepad or something. And he actually knew me by name. And how long have you been reading these books? 15 years, 15 years, 15 years. So that was dope, you know, but I think what was even better you know, my mom asked me because what we do with this, what I did with the second half of the trip is every year, you know, I do that trip with my mom. Yep. So this was, yep. this was the fifth year and, uh, we do one trip a year, three or four days. I let her pick where she wants to go usually. And, uh, we, we do it because she lives in Florida. I'm living in, in Pennsylvania. I'm hustling, you know, it's, it, we don't get a chance to really get that right. time, mm -hmm. you know, and she was a single mom, me and her yeah. got, we, we grew up together. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and so I just never want to look back and be like, man, I never I spent no right. time with my mom at right. all. Cause we don't live, you know, around each other. So that was something we, we put into place. And, and so when she saw me, she asked me what was my favorite part. And I told her I, uh, my favorite part of it was, was taking Tristan. That was your favorite part of that was the trip. My, that was my favorite part. So, you know, for those of you that don't know, I got a young young man in my uh, business, 22 years old now, uh, and he's, you know, been in the game for uh, a few years. Started out with us 18, 19 years old, and uh, he's been tearing it up. So his, his name's Tristan, and, and uh, he's doing big things. But it took me, you know, I'm 37. It took me till I was 36 to meet John Maxwell yeah, and to see this bro. person and see him teach and coach live. Mm -hmm. um, and so to give Tristan that experience at 22 right. and to watch it right. and be a part of right. it and, and for us to enjoy that together, that was probably my favorite part Boom. because now that I've been doing this long enough, man, it, it truly is about I get more excited on the purpose and, and watching other people's lives right. develop and grow than I than, than anything else because I've already had the success you know I've already won awards I've won all the trophies I've made enough money I mean you always want to make more of course you, you know do. I like to do that like, but yeah. but it ain't like that's my main that that don't get me Gone. off right, so to right, speak right. you know what I mean that that is it's up uh, it's up there it makes it fun but it's more about man I'm watching Justin build a, a brand Boom. new house right 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody that came in the, the, the business with me watching Steve do things mm -hmm. and Greg do things. Like, Greg bought some properties. Steve's killing it and doing well. Like, watching their life, these other people's lives Change. transform is, is the key. So, that was, that was my favorite that was my favorite part of the whole thing. We, we got to meet the CEO of the Breakers Hotel, which is, I think, one of the oldest privately owned uh, hotels. hotels that's been around and hear their story. And, the, you know, the guy say that uh, the Marriott, you know, you hear the Mar Marriott, oh, yeah. I think the, the family, somebody from the family told him that they're never going to make it. And uh, I thought that was cool. We were on the largest, um, I think, yacht in... Yep. America, the largest yacht in America. That's the largest and you were commercial in what, yacht, and, and I where, think, in America. What part were you at in Florida? Miami. What? You were in Miami. So we, went, we we were in West Palm, and then we, okay. they took us to Miami. And we got on this yacht. Oh wow! And uh, I thought that was sweet. That was that's that gotta was, be nice. That was fun. They they had a, a guy. That, he calls himself a mentalist. Not mentalist. a his name was Wayne. He was cool too. It, not not a magician, mm -hmm. but a mentalist. And I'm talking about if I told you. What he it was just wild. I, I guess I gotta say it now. So he he was he did like a uh, he's been on TV a few times, and so he did a study or something on you know there's been there was a politician that got shot and he was a twin mm -hmm. with somebody, and it it they they were doing research because the twin collapsed at the exact same time that the person got shot. Shot and he fell. And he, and the twin fell, and okay. then later on. They, he went to the hospital. He said, there's nothing wrong, you know, with you. Everything looks fine. And then it would come out that his brother got killed and got shot in that in that spot and at the exact same time. And so he started to talk about how close people's energy, you know, can be if you're that close and stuff like that. So I don't know what he did, but here's what happened. Okay. Let's he explain got it. Let's two see. people up there. Two people he out, said you the had, audience. out of the audience, okay. but you have to be a friend. Okay. So he said you had to you had to be at least know about that person okay. and have a close relationship with them. Could be spouse, could be friend, could be son, but you gotta know the know person. Each other. Okay. So boom, they picked two ladies, they spread out across the stage, maybe 10, 15 feet. Mm -hmm. And he says, blindfolded both of them. I got nervous. I didn't know. I'm like, oh, well, slow down, Max. Slow it down, no. Max. What no. you bringing me to? <laughs> no, they, 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 uh, they blindfolded both of them. Uh -huh. And uh, he, he started off, and he, uh, he had a feather. And he, he said, if you feel it on your arm, uh, then raise your hand. So he did it on the one girl's arm, uh -huh. and both of them raised their hands. But he made them like before this, he's like, you know, just imagine this, breathe, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. And it was almost like they were like hypnotized. Right. It was crazy. But he wiped the thing, uh, the feather on them, both of them. Then he, then he took the microphone and he like bopped them in the back, you know, the girl, same right. girl. Same. And he said, if you felt that on your back, raise your hand. Both of them raised their hand two times. You know, he asked them how many times. So he did that a few times. It was it was it was crazy. He ended up unblindfolding them after they did a bunch of that stuff, uh -huh. and then he asked them, uh, "If they felt, do you think? It, raise your hand if you think I hit you with the microphone." And both of them, thing. And then the, he let the audience tell him what what happened. And it was like I talked to the lady. She's from Miami. She don't know that guy from Adam. Right. Like, you know, I want to make sure he didn't they, pay her. You, you know sure? what I'm saying? I'm Listen, like, so I was talking where I to come her. from. I just want to make sure that yeah. there wasn't no sneaky stuff going on. Yep. So so then 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 he was uh reading people's minds mm -hmm. Psh, bro i watched it happen he went around to eight different. seven or eight different people yeah, he said everybody think at one time hard think about something and then he would he would start asking uh whose name uh begins with the j and in and uh drives a and in, 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 uh is thinking about a a, a car boom <laughs> somebody raised their hand yeah my so, name's james and, and and i was thinking about a car right I said all right well He's like maroon, nineteen eighty seven, uh, Cadillac. Boom! And the guy's like, "Oh my god, you gotta be kidding!" That's me. ridiculous. So he yeah. kept doing stuff like that. Yeah, the, the stuff that made no sense. Like how? I mean, There's and no these way. are like all real people from the. I saw him at the event. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like th these are real people, and uh, that was that was up there with one of the Highlights. more intriguing things yeah. on that yacht. Yeah, they had fireworks. Uh, a firework display where we stood on on the top of the thing with a band, and and they had fireworks in the middle of boom, the, boom, boom, boom. the water That's, in the in the ocean wow. in South Beach wow. area South over Beach there on the biggest it yacht. Was, it was tight with it fireworks. Was cool. Yeah, it was cool. And Maxwell's dope. Had a good time.
Yeah. A lot of wisdom. I, th I think the biggest thing that I could say that I got, you know, just a reminder, you know, it's, it's one thing to see someone teaching something. It's another thing to watch them in person. Mm -hmm. And I think just the way that he genuinely cares and, and make sure that you can feel that he cares right. and, and, and practices what he preaches, mm -hmm. relationships, you know, making people matter, you know, stuff like that. He would just slow down with all the people there, find a way to check on everybody and at least okay. tap you a couple right. times. Yeah. You know what I mean? In, intentional. You, you could right. tell it was intentional, right. you know, for him. So, you know, just to see the humility, you know, that he, wa that he walks with. And, uh, you know, I think... He, he he talked a lot about just finding your 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 purpose, and when people can find their purpose in within their organization, within what it is that that, that you're doing, like Whatever. all right, yeah, we're 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 doing uh, we're in the life insurance business as one of the companies, Correct. so we're in the life, but we're really we're we're going to just serve people. We're going to make it our mission to help people that struggle in their marriages. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna make it our mission to help people get in better shape physically or mentally or, you know, whatever. We're going to, we're going to make it more than that. So, so you got a mission and a purpose of something that actually matters about, you know, other people. So finding like when people can start to find that purpose of why they're doing what they're doing right. and try to make it no matter what it is, just try to wrap it around. Like, this is my mission. This is why I'm doing this. This mm -hmm. is my purpose more than just, this is the business that I'm in. Right. That that's when things can can start to be majorly changed, and you know I thought that was cool that they had a man. I could just go on and on. They had Ben Watson up there, tight end for the New England Patriots. Talk. They had uh, he had a book. They started to talk right there about uh, the country uh, coming together instead of apart. A you have that's a black cool. man trying to explain you know his perspective and what's going on uh, you know from from that side of things and and just being everybody just being like loving and open-minded and not judging you know people and, and and so they started to talk about like you know when when the only person's uh opinion that matters is your own mm -hmm. if somebody else has a different perspective and you're not open-minded to at least at least listen to it right. or not you know uh dog them out because they have a different From viewpoint you. Right. you know th right. than you then it's then it's immature correct you know and maturity is all right, I have a difference of opinion with you. I don't agree with you. Right. I have a difference of opinion, but you're entitled to, to, to your opinion as well. Uh, that's when you start to get to a different place of maturity. So I think it was cool. I'm not, you know, I don't think the majority of those people, you know, were in there, were voting for this, uh, you know, side, you know, of things, but there were some. And in the way that he was wrapping, you know, wrapping his arms around everybody and just under, just trying to make the point of, the country will be better off when you can love somebody regardless of what that's right you know they're who they're voting for mm -hmm. and not dividing us and and he said uh he said uh man i'd have to look at the notes he said uh great good leaders or good countries or good teams they uh they divide their enemies and bring together their friends and I, that's not the exact quote. It was, uh, or here it is. Great leaders drive, uh, divide our enemies and unite our friends. Okay. Boom. Great leaders divide our enemies and unite, and unite our, our friends. friends. Okay. And, and, and the opposite happens is bad leaders unite their enemies and divide their friends. Okay. So when you, when, when you divide your friends and then, then you unite your, your enemies versus bringing everybody together. Yeah. So, so we're stronger together versus than, than, than apart. We got enough people out there trying to kill us as right. a country. We got right. other countries that would love to just take, take us, us off out. the map, yeah. blow us off the map. And, and they were talking about, man, that they haven't seen the country together, super together since 9-11. Like when 9-11 happened, you saw Americans come together. Republicans came together with Democrats and people with different beliefs. And, and they were talking about how strong it was to see people like, you know what, we all... We all together, together in this, done, you know right. what I'm saying? That that type of vibe and, and feeling, and it's a it's a shame that it takes like a war, you know what I mean, or right. something like that to maybe get things more more together. But he was just talking about just the the, the division, you know, right now, and and how to overcome that, and and 
and uh, having people speak into that to just broaden people's perspective. And I thought watching that happen was was powerful. Um, there was I, I could just I could take all day, you know, talking just, about just, how cool it was. And Tristan loved it too. Loved Tristan it. had a blast. What did he get from it? You know, I think we'd have to ask him. We'd have to ask him. I, huh? I, I think. Um, I think he was just in awe. Just about like the same way I was the right first, first time, time I went. Right. I mean, I've I've been to a lot. I you know I've traveled yeah. at this point, and uh, I remember last year just being very first a, time there, huh? being amazed yeah. in, in in London. It was just a, it was crazy. So just like I said, to, to see him was was my favorite was my favorite part because he appreciated it. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like right. if you take somebody to a football game that don't like football, yeah. it could be two of the best players of all time right. playing best team. You could take them to the Super Bowl and they ain't going to appreciate like, it. Uh, they like, uh, it's nah, nice. it's it ain't nice. a big deal. Yeah. Or somebody that don't like boxing and you're taking right. them to watch boxing, whatever. It, I want like he loves Maxwell the, the same way I did. Right. And I know it's it's helped him so much to develop as a leader. And I knew he would take the note. I mean, he was like the whole time just taking notes. Always. And people ask me, and even at that at that um, event, people, older people, because he's 22 years old, everybody, average age in there, I'd have to he say. He was the youngest. It was 50. He was, was he the youngest? By far. Wow. By far. Here's how bad it was. Didn't want to do it. <laughs> didn't want to keep it real uh, about this. I don't know how I feel about this, but four or five people at some point was like, I see it. Father, son. Oh, I'm like, they gave you the. Can you did, believe did this they happened? Give it to you? Just when I think I'm starting to look young. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm they like, man, man, I still got it. I still got handsome. it. They was like, I see it. Father, son. A couple times. I'm like, no, no, you don't see it. <laughs> nah. What you talking about, dog? You y know what I mean? Y'all look alike. Just so, a little taller. That's all. Yeah. So that was it. That was it. That that's that's um uh, that was the 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 funny part wow. I would say about that's the cool. deal. But just watching watching him interact with people yeah. and all that, and them asking me, well, what sticks out to you about him? Why right. him? Right. Why would Why you bring him? him? So I'd like to answer that. Go Why? Ahead. Why him? I said because number one, he's the most coachable. This one I wish people don't miss. I don't even care if they're in my business or in a trucking Any business. Business. I don't care what business you're in. The if you're talented and you got a good coach, mm -hmm. my my advice is to just don't worry about what you think. Do what they think. Do what the person tells you to do. Just follow them. Here's why I say that. It's not ego. Mm -mm. It's not like I just want somebody to listen to anything that I tell them to do and feel like I get they're my slave. Okay, that's not it at all. That's not my leadership style. I don't think it. You, how do you win with that right. mindset and, and, and mentality? It's because when I came into this business, I didn't know anything. Anything. I didn't know anything about business other than what I learned in the streets. Right. That, that was it. And and I listened to Marcus Smith, who was my leader and mentor. And I go from no no having no job to making two hundred thousand a year my first year, three hundred thousand a second year, six hundred thousand the, the third year. It's not about money, but when you don't come from money, right, right, that shit's a big deal. That's a huge to me. deal. Huge I was deal. like, what the heck is going on? This I didn't. I, I thought so small for my own self. I was scared to death. I didn't think nothing like that was supposed to happen to somebody yeah. like me. Not you got that young. What's going I mean, on? I was man. scared. This, this ain't right. Something wrong. It was because Marcus will tell you. I listened to every single thing that he told me to do to the T 100% of the time. No questions asked, whatever it is, you name it, I'm going to get it done no matter what. He says that I was the most coachable person he ever coached. And that's why I had a lot of successes. I had him as a, a, a great coach. He has already He's knew already, what he was doing. Right. He won in the same game I'm trying to win. In right. So all I, all I had to do was just shut yep. up and follow. Right. Tristan does that. Is he don't overcomplicate it of, uh, well, I'm going to do this, 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 and that, but I'm not going to do that. See if that works. Right. Or I'm not going to ask the questions. He's a student. He executes 100%. And I got a lot of people that are super coachable and that execute things. But, I mean, to the to the T, for the longest amount of time over the last few years, he, he's up there with probably more than most in forever, in ever, in, in just uh, coachable. Right. Executes – 100% of what you ask them to do. That that's what exactly I think what expedites people's process right. in business. If you if you want to get good and you find someone that's a good coach that's been where you're trying to go, just shut up and listen. Just follow it. 
takes humility, though. Because cats don't want to listen. Because if you think no. you know it all, if you yeah. think you know better than the coach, yeah. if you think you know better than that yeah. person, that's going to be in your way. Right. Humble yourself. It's hard. I'd listen to a 20-year-old if they were teaching me golfing and I can't golf. Right. I'd listen, right. I'd, I'd listen to a 23-year-old if they're teaching me boxing and, I, and I'm just <clears throat> learning to box. Whatever it is, I'm right. going to just shut up and listen to the person that, I'm, that, that, that I, I want to lead me and I'm going to execute 100%. That, that's what he does. That, I told mm -hmm. him that. That number one thing. Uh, the second thing I said was, was work ethic was, was impeccable sacrifice you know moves around whatever uh, yeah. whatever whatever it takes you know puts the, puts the work in but the third thing i said is the more success that he's had the hump the more humble that he got that's most people would get i think abraham lincoln said i don't know for sure don't quote me but i think it was abraham lincoln he said that almost any man can handle adversity but if you really want to <clears throat> test a man give him success mm. because sometimes we become our own worst enemy when we start to have success. We think we know it all. Right. And and then we want to stop listening. Or right. we get an ego. Get too big for your bridges. Get a big head yeah. or start wilding out yeah. or you know what I mean? Or whatever it is. And and so he was able to keep his humble. spirit yeah. humble mm -hmm. even as he was starting to at a young age have too. more success at, at a young age. And, and so uh, again, I don't want this this ain't this ain't a knock no. on anybody. Right. We got amazing people talented people i'm just trying to keep it real i can name a slew of people that are really talented slew of people that are loyal slew of people that that are pretty coachable pretty pr i mean a slew of people that got a good work ethic i mean it's not about but but if i can isolate the person that was with me and why and someone else asking me this is what i answered about it and 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 hopefully it it helps somebody out there right it, this should this should only inspire and motivate. This should right. help people out there. And I think if you can apply that in, in your world, whether you're in a real estate business, mortgage business, you're you're a, uh, an athlete playing for a coach. If you can apply those things, mm -hmm. watch what happens over a 12 to 24 month period. If you execute and you're that coachable at, at that level, watch watch what happens. More often than not, you're going to win. And so I, I think the. The next one, if you could remind me, Giovanni, one the the other things that that I got that I want to talk about Let's and talk give about the people. Um, Let's talk about it. We're gonna do that next because I think we're running out of time. Uh, but we'll do that on the next one. There was a guy by the name of Chris Hodges, and he was a pastor, and I think they were telling me he impacts or his church has sixty thousand people on a Sunday, and he talked about depression and how he went through a as a pastor a successful pastor and good person he he fell in a, a period of a year or two where he went through a, a bad mental time and depression mm -hmm. he, and he went on and explaining that and, and explaining some really good perspectives on that and how to look at people that struggle for right. a year through depression or they have a hard time mentally or, or whatever and then some solutions on how he learned how to get better I'll fix it from that and i think people in in this world you know, we're all grinding, stressing, hustling. You know, people died. There's so many things that that in this world, you know, we ain't in heaven yet. Yeah. So whether it's illness or death or breakups or this, it's like, man, there's always something that people are hurting from and, and, and going through. And it's how we handle those moments. And I think, man, the, the tips that he gave on how to battle through and understand people that are going through uh, depression or, or mentally mm -hmm. uh, at a tough place is explained phenomenal. And I, I could read the notes and explain them. And uh, I think that would be a good one, you know, that I think people would, would uh, find value in if you could, if you could remind me uh, of that. So uh, anyway, we got to run. We appreciate yes. your time on the grind cast. If you found this helpful in any way, shape or form, share it with somebody let other people know about it so we can start to impact and multiply and, and uh, add value to people's life go, out man. there. So let's get let's it. Go. We'll see you next time on the Grindcast. Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Trying to told him I'm a beast, bud.